What's up YouTube? Welcome back for part 3 of the EJ253 engine teardown uh, or cylinder head replacement I should say uh, otherwise known as the time belt snappy intake valve bendy uh, series of videos so as you saw in the last one I got the engine out uh, it's sitting on the floor and basically it's ready to at least get down pull the heads off the block and you know go over the damage and see see if any damage has happened to the bottom end make sure it's reusable and uh, probably just maybe stop the video there I don't know maybe we'll go ahead and clean the deck of the block too I don't know but I'll start with pulling the intake off and even at that point might be able to look down ports and actually see that all the valves look to be open or something like that and that'll be the, the obvious tell that there's a serious problem um, but until I get the heads off will I really actually see the damage so um, of course the time belt's got to come back off because I put that back on or a replacement one that I had and uh, so it doesn't doesn't actually take too long once the engine's out of the car and uh, I've seen videos where people are trying to remove heads within the car and I'm, I'm sure it can be done um, but it's just not something I would probably bother doing especially if you have a crane and you or, or you have the option of some way pulling the engine out I literally remember one of me and one of my cousins now he did most of the lifting and dragged me along with it but I had a uh, like a 4x4 four four going across all rope to the engine and I stood on one side and he stood on the other and we lifted that engine up out of there and I had a lot of the front of the car actually cut off so we rested it there and then lifted it back up in the back of a truck and that's how I got that one out. <laughs> so yeah and I'm not really doing this in the best situation I, I'd love to have the, the the engine sitting up on the bench or even even on an engine stand would be ideal um, but I, I'm not I'm not really set up in the situation r as of right now to be able to do that so the engine is still sitting in the 20 liter pail and the 20 liter pail actually uh, kinked <laughs> overnight but it didn't collapse like all the way or anything so the engine's still sitting upright didn't tip over into the car or anything like that uh, so yeah I'll get the camera set up and start tearing the intake off and see what we find so yeah I'll first start with taking the intake off uh, I'm going to temporarily kind of mount the throttle body back on. EGR tube's got to come off, a bunch of wiring, like emissions hose, and uh, it should relatively just pop off by the 12 millimeter actual intake bolts and uh, lift right out of there. Next steps are remove all the timing and then go on to the actual valve covers. So you want to have something underneath here, some cardboard, a pan, 
because a lot of stuff's going to be falling out of here. As soon as you pull that head, you're going to get coolant, oil. Um, so, I mean, you want to do your best on both sides to try and catch as much of it and so you don't make a huge mess. But, yeah, so we'll get the timing off and then uh, start with the uh, valve covers, cam covers, head covers, whatever you want to call them. And then pull the heads off and see what we got. So a couple of things here, uh, breaking these head bolts loose, because you have the engine out of the car and it's not fastened by motor mounts anymore, it is best if it sits the weight on the ground because sometimes they're just really tight. Um, another thing is I, I actually have a 14 millimeter 12 point uh, solid socket that I bought from Snap-on years ago for this. Um, it's hard to get these in kits now it seems like no one wants to give you 12 points anymore but uh, a 9 16 would probably get on there and work for you if you had to use it um, so I think I even have one of those too but yeah I just I was I mean I was a snap-on guy a lot of my tools are snap-on um, but sometimes it's just better having the right tools I mean you've one of those were to start stripping. You can imagine what kind of issue you're into then. So these come, come off in a certain order and we'll start with A over here. Then we go for B down here. And then C is up here. And then D is this bottom corner over here. E is the top middle. Oh, E! I can only imagine what F's gonna be like. So now I get all of them loose, um, I'll go ahead and take out the center one and the three bottom ones. I'll leave these two top.
And then while, while kind of just holding on to it, I'll loosen the last two. This little backing on the cylinder head. There's a 10 mil bolt I gotta get. Fortunately, my gun's right here. Ah! better look inside here and uh, I don't know it doesn't really look like there's valve contact on this side if anything I would say the, in the exhaust valves hit Those reliefs look a little strange. And mind you that the engine did run uh, a little bit after this all happened because I got the time belt back onto it. But we got the head over on the bench here. So let's just get a look at what's going on with it. These, these exhaust valves look off-centered to me. Uh, and something else is actually, you can see where this valve's hit. It's right across the tops here. But this cylinder looks actually like it's okay. Looks that way. I don't know, at this point I'll probably just turn the engine around and uh, take the other cylinder head off from that side. So I mean this head it's definitely got a bent bent intake valve here and all the exhaust valves have taken some type of hit. These ones look bent, these ones look bent. And uh, then when I looked at these ones a little closer, uh, they certainly that one's been whacked, sitting hitting a few times. And these ones you can just see a little bit of carbon broken off the end there. I don't know if that's from uh, the valve touching or not this is the best looking cylinder out of all of them anyway um, it doesn't look like the intakes touched on this cylinder but certainly this one and this one have taken which are both forward have taken some serious damage so uh, it's a good thing we've got new heads to put on so obviously there's some type of relief for the valve, but it, uh, I got a feeling they've taken a little. So, uh, but I mean that's what we're 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 trying to save this up bottom end, and uh, I think it can be done. I was thinking of going about and starting to clean stuff up, but it's really clean. Like there's not going to be very much I have to do at all, and. Uh, which is which is good I even though I have all the proper tools to do all the cleaning it still takes time and and uh, 
it needs to be done you, that's the last thing you need to do is put something together with a bit of bit of car, loose carbon or a little bit of dust and dirt uh, grits of sand you know that but yeah that's gonna do it for this video uh, this will this will conclude part three uh, you know part part four I'm just gonna basically get into a little bit of cleanup and digging out the fresh parts and go about reassembly we'll try and get it all together to the point that the intakes back on and so I can get ready to set it back in the car so yeah if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button for me and uh, leave your questions comments further down below I'll see you in the next one